episode. Hey everybody, Preston Brent here with our weekly roundup. This is for the trading week ending November 3rd, 2017. All I can say is this market reminds me of running of the bulls. I've only done that one time, believe it or not. Pamplona, Spain, I believe is where I was. But um, I ran with the bulls and I ran like a son of a gun. <laughs> everybody should try it at least once. Um, as certainly an interesting experience but speaking of the bulls in the market it truly is a momentum market and we've seen this past week all three indexes closing at record highs um, there is a little bit of a rising risk out there which I'll talk about in just a minute but we've got the markets on this strong upward momentum and then coupled this week with the proposed tax bill by the Republicans out of Congress um, tends to supplant the uh, markets to the upside. So why don't we just jump in and take a look at what I'm looking at right now. What you see on the screen here is a little bit different. I'm starting with the Vanguard All World Index, and I want to kind of work backwards to the U.S. markets, and that'll kind of help support the thesis that I've had all year long, that we're in this globalized, synchronized, upward movement all year long and for our members you probably know this quite well in our chat room and in our three times a week um, sessions that we do online is that I've been a buy on the dip all year long and I've got friends in the hedge fund industry I've got friends that are trading and on TV and uh, almost 60 or 70 percent of them have been trying to short this market to just kind of prove that hey they can come in here and short it and then three months later say look at how smart I was by shorting the market here but they've been taken to the woodshed and what we do here at trader user group is play the price action and whether you agree or disagree logically or not price action always trumps everything else now the other thing about the markets is that they can always overextend to the upside or to the downside and almost always they do that I mean the market price action when you really sit back and think about it is a reflection of fear and greed in the human market and this is kind of like um, the area where we see this play out over and over again which is why stock chart patterns generally give you an edge if you understand how to read and interpret them and and then look at them across multiple time frames which would be kind of like from a fractal perspective it always always translates into the fear and greed of human nature which is why um, uh, in our user group we've done fairly well since I founded our group back in 2008 um, during the worst times of the uh, fiscal crisis in September 2008 actually and in fact we had great years since then um, in our room so now taking a look at this this is the Vanguard if you look at this channel you can see here the all world index has been on a superior uh, growth global growth path going left to right across the screen inside this channel as we've been moving higher it is about a 45 degree vector to the upside and like most markets it gets carried away a little bit to the upside and then we have a little bit of a downside move right we get carried away here we ride the top a little bit we come down to the bottom and we're just translating from up to down up to down as we've been going this entire year because nothing goes straight up it'll go up down up down and it kind of plays this this pattern here which translates into this right here okay now for our members and our group you understand that we've been a buy on the dip for the entire year and I know now even you guys on this weekly roundup are tired of hearing me say it but you don't get tired of hearing me say it when you're making money and timing your buys uh, towards the middle to lower end of the gap right and then timing either your hedging activity or profit taking activity on the upper end of the range makes sense now this too will change when we start into a sell the rally mode which means the markets then start a channel to the downside we're not there yet okay um, and that's why when you follow price action and you're using it across multiple time frames and the markets come up and then they do one of these things like this 
and then they start to roll over, right? You never sell here. You just, you, you will not do it. You know, you may end up selling right here, or you may get out a little bit early and sell here, and then Matt, miss this gap run up here. And you don't want to succumb to the FOMO disease, which we call the fear of missing out. I mean, statistics have shown, scientific study has shown that human nature tends to fear out on missing profits here more so than they do on losing money in an active trade to the downside, which totally amazes me. What you've got to do is get that damn brain of yours focused on price action and away from what logic may tell you. Logic would say interest rates should be a lot higher right now. Logic would tell you that the bond market should be a lot lower right now. Logic would tell you that the the spread between high yield bonds or junk bonds and treasury should be a lot higher than where they are now, but none of that is true. So you've just got to follow the price action in order to give yourself a long-term equity curve that looks more like what I know every one of you would like to see. So looking at this, you can see uh, the All World Index. Now, if we just zoom in on China, let's take a look at China for a second. Look at China as through this ETF tracking fund, Asher, A-S-H-R, Apple Sierra Hotel Romeo. This vector is more than 45%. It's about 48 to 50% vector to the upside. What does that tell you? And this covers since the summer of this year. It has been on fire. Money has been coming in across China. Now, when we start our Option Masters, I'm going to spend some of the first sessions and series in our Options Masters. It's going to be like 40 plus hours of, of training all across the investing spectrum. And if you're not in it, I highly encourage you to check it out. For, your, for our members, you get a discount. You should be in this and most of our members are. It's kicking off, I think, this coming Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But what we're going to be talking about is the macro view of where I see over the next five and 10 years, big money is going to be made and money is going to be lost in the macro environment from a global perspective. But look at China. It is just moving strong to the upside. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I see a little bit of near-term weakness, but nothing that would really concern me too much as we go through the end of the year, okay? Now, China had their once every five years uh, old man's meeting where they determine who's going to run that country, and President Xi obviously won. He was the lock-on favorite. I mean, and he submitted his power, and now pretty much, in fact, some of his policies have gotten submitted into the Chinese constitution. Um, so he can pretty much drive that country any way he wants. And he's got some really interesting themes going out to 2050. In the U.S., our politicians just go quarter by quarter, like our companies do, or month by month. So that's why, longer term, I think the U.S. is not going to be the place where we're going to want to put a lot of our money. Okay, But looking at China, you can see just where this has been going. Now, let's come in and look at Japan. Also an Asian country that has been doing very well. Look at the Nikkei. This is the Nikkei, right? And I mean, look at this. I mean, this is, now this is since August. That is a rocket ship. That is about a 65 to 70 degree slope to the upside. If I put it on a weekly basis, um, you can see here this big move. We had this big breakout right of that big key pivot right there and then really since summer of this year the nikkei has been moving very strong part of the reason is shinzo abe the prime minister had a snap election um, a few weeks ago he won he submitted more power and he's promised more stimulus he's promised more money out there he wants to jack up inflation he wants to get inflation higher um, and the, the the they're not afraid of buying corporate um, assets, corporate bonds, um, and, and floating money out in the marketplace um, to, to um, basically uh, move this. So this is kind of where we're sitting right now with Japan. So we've got the Japanese uh, markets very strong. 
We've got the Asian markets, China, very strong. South Korea looks like it's been hurt a little bit because of the problems on the Korean peninsula, but I think South Korea is also going to come along very strong. So um, we've seen this global growth, and of course, we've seen it also in Europe as well. So when we kind of put these together, now let's switch over to the U.S. markets and look at the e-mini S&P 500 futures. Let me take it back on a daily chart again. Again, the same look and feel, right? Here is a slope. It's not as steep as Japan has been or China, but it's about a 40 degree angle um, from the beginning of the year to where we are right now. And you can see the acceleration. We're near all time highs, okay? We're still in a buy the dip. The MACD is telling us buy the dip, buy the dip. Um, and you can see where we're floating right now with volume over price on the left-hand side of the chart in this channel, all-time highs, right, on the E-minis. And now let's look at the Dow futures. Dow futures are the same way, perhaps even stronger to the upside near all-time highs. And how about NASDAQ, NASDAQ futures? Um, look at this. We closed near the all-time highs on NASDAQ futures, supported by Amazon and Google and Microsoft and then you know, some of the others that are coming in very strong um, that we're seeing uh, across there. And let's not forget uh, Facebook and, and some of the others that are going to be doing very strong. So we've got a lot of these just moving higher and higher on this momentum. And then, of course, on the auspices of a possible um, tax cut coming, which will help corporations dramatically, and the possible repatriation of money from overseas, which if they were to bring it back now, it'd be taxed at 35%, but it would be taxed, I think, in, in the low teens if they bring it back under this new tax plan and then what they want to do. And that money coming back here is in the trillions of dollars. So that would recommend that would probably spur M&A activity of the companies that would be moving the money back. And some that had the most money offshore would be like Apple, um, Microsoft, some of the tech companies. Um, and <clears throat> That would spur um, probably perhaps more dividends payout, more share buyback. But I would suspect the share buyback would be a little bit less because their share is elevated. But clearly reduction of debt on their balance sheet, M&A activity, um, increased dividend payouts. Um, again, that just bodes a bullish action for the markets. So we've got a lot of these things, the sun and the moon and the stars kind of lining up. And then you throw on top of it low interest rates. And um, Jerome Powell just got a, appointed uh, by uh, Trump to be the new Fed chair. He's got the same old, same old. He's kind of viewed as the mini me of Yellen. So the Fed policy shouldn't change. In fact, when he announced, when Trump announced, the markets didn't really move that much. Um, he, so he's dovish. The markets only have priced in one rate hike next year, about a 97% chance of a rate hike this December. So it's over. Get used to it. A rate hike is going to come out, and that's already booked into the, the price action right now. But understand the markets have only priced in one rate hike next year. Um, the, the feds are saying three rate hikes next year. So it, there's going to be a little bit of a correction activity if the feds do what they say and the markets have priced in one okay so i do see a little bit of an opportunity for a slight pullback but near term short of any geopolitical risk like a problem on the on on the uh, korean peninsula with north korea or anything out of iran or anything unusual like that i don't see uh too much in the way of stopping this momentum to the upside of course, if they don't get the tax package through and Trump starts to have problems, then I think we're going to have a pullback. But keep in mind that a big part of this move up is also strong corporate profits. So we've got a lot of that activity moving the markets. Now, and of course, if we look at the VIX, as I said, volatility um, is at I mean, look at this. I mean, we're down here. We finished uh, Friday this past week at nine point one four. Uh, and if you look at the vol here, that yellow line is a two-decade low of 8.6, and we closed out the week at 9.14. So fall is very low, um, and it's and and part of it is the makeup of how big money is investing right now in the markets through these passive index funds. It's kept volatility low. I've spent time on this with our members, talked briefly about it here, um, but there's going to be some risk associated with that when we 
when the markets do get ready for its neg push lower. But anyway, fall is very low, so it's just it's supported and supplanted this move higher. Okay, let's look at the bond market. This is very interesting. The bonds are moving slightly higher, which means interest rates have been moving lower. Now, in this environment, with an exploding equity market, not only in the U.S., but across Europe, across the Asia Pacific area, you would expect interest rates and inflation to be taking hold, but they are not. So there is some under the surface activity that's going on that's keeping inflation low keeping interest rates low the dynamics of the market have changed a bit it's not going to be same oh same oh over the next three years it's not going to react the markets are not going to react the way they've answered before or, or reacted before it's just not there's going to be some great opportunities here um uh in the markets going to be some great opportunities and this is where i think our user group and our members are going to have a lot of fun. Um, but look at the bond market. Um, we're coming up to some key inflection points here. Prior pivot high, the 50 EMA, the 200 EMA. Uh, so we've got um, just some really great opportunity here. I think um, it's starting to, to play itself out. Now, let's look at the... Um, uh, one of the things I find interesting is the U.S. dollar. Okay. And it's kind of the tip of the spear of where the U.S. economy and interest rates go. You can see for the entire year, starting in January, which was when almost the first trading day of the year, we hit our high uh, and our open price for the year, 103.81. And then the dollar's been moving down since in this channel, about a 45 degree, slightly more elevated than that to the downside. But now you can see down at the bottom down here, we're starting to get this, this bottoming process right here. And generally when a market transitions from a up mode to a down mode, it just doesn't do it in a peak like that uh, or from the bottom to the up. Very rarely, do, it, it's more of a process where it kind of rounds out and then moves up. And it's faster, it happens faster on the downside up than on the upside down, right? It happens a little bit faster. The process is quicker. But when we look at this and we see where the markets are, you can see this bottoming process as we've been moving down and we're transitioning to this up channel. Now, does it have legs? Can it move higher? I believe it can near term. I mean, if we let me just kind of zoom in a little bit and show you a couple of different things that I'm seeing on here. So if we zoom in on this chart here, and let's just I'm going to leave the channels on the screen. It'll it'll muddy it up just a little bit. But let me just kind of zoom in here. If we look at this, what you're going to see here is uh, a pattern that all of you are probably familiar with. Right. Um like that and as I draw this in probably very poorly <laughs> but you can see here that would be the left shoulder this would be the head and this would be the right shoulder of a of a um, head and shoulders pattern but in this case it's bullish and how do you measure the upside objective I mean where are we going to go up here you'll see I have two pivots up here two key price levels and the upside objective takes us somewhere in the middle here because what you do is you measure the neckline in this case right there to the peak of the head and then you've got that line there and then you just transpose it over here and then it comes up there like that so again that's very messy it's hard for you to see so if I already use the the software to do it for me. I can come in here and then I'm just going to put it on a price ruler and I'm going to come down to the bottom of the neckline and I'm going to move it up to the top like that, right? Uh, let me just move it down just a little bit. Let me just delete that here. Uh, come on, get off, get off, get off the screen. Oops, I don't want that. And then if I were to look at this right like this, right? And then I were just to highlight it. And then let's just put it like this. Okay, so now if I were to take this and then move it to the next level right here, where would the next level be? You would see that it puts us right in the middle of these two key um, pivot points uh, right here, right? And it puts us up to around the 97 area, right around 97. And we're currently at about 
um, 94.8 or something like that. So if I put it on the weekly chart, you'll see where those two areas come from, right? I mean, you can see clearly see those two key pivots are essentially uh, in this area that we spent a lot of time right there. And you can see all that volume over price right here. Remember, each bar is one week in time. So we were here. Um, we started with week one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the seventh week, almost in the second month, did we finally give it up and break to the downside. So this is going to be a really tight area to get through. I think the dollar, based on this chart pattern, would indicate the dollar is going to be moving up into this area right here. And it would make sense. We've got the feds coming out. They're going to meet on December the 13th. We should get their new fiscal policy, their policy statement or monetary policy statement. Rather, we're going to get their monetary policy statement. And then if they come out and they stick to that three um, rate hikes for the following year uh, and the markets are strong and the tax package is going to be cut, then I can almost assure you that the odds will favor a breakout of this tight area here and then it's going to continue to run. If it looks like it's going to be dovish and then they give a very dovish statement, which which the markets are counting on because Powell, the new elect, is dovish. Now, remember, this is going to be Yellen. This will be her last podium um, press conference in December. And then uh, Jerome Powell takes over in February. But Yellen will keep it dovish for him, kind of tee it up for him. So that means we can have a hang up in the dollar here until we see where we want to go from here. Um, so it's going to be really interesting. Near term, I am bullish the dollar, though. OK, and the euro is going to be just the opposite. If we look at gold, it's moving in the direction I talked about. Um, let's put it back on the daily chart. Uh, and let's zoom back out just a little bit. You'll see here with gold, um, we're challenging the 200 EMA. We're spending the past two weeks at the 200 EMA. I think the odds favor a break to the downside. Gold hates higher inflation, which we don't have, uh, or I'm sorry, higher interest rates, which we don't have right now. So with an interest rate hike, you'll see gold, I think, kind of drift a little bit lower. At some point, though, gold is going to be a wonderful buy, not at this point in time. Okay, now we were long gold over on the left hand side of this move higher, but we got out uh, not at the peak, but somewhere in this area right here. And then it kind of overextended to the upside and then rolled back over to the points that I had talked about. That's where we're sitting with gold right now. Oil, folks, for oil, we're in a nice run here. We've been trading oil since no heavy trading oil since November of last year. We've been trading the downside. We've been trading neutral. We've been trading the upside. Now we're trading the upside. For our members, we're having fun with this. It's making us money. If you're a non-member, you may want to come in and check it out. Just the oil profits alone have been wonderful for us. Um, it, even if that's what you're doing now and the option masters, one of the really cool things I'm going to do is I'm going to set up just an oil only portfolio and I'm going to have three different portfolios that I'm actually going to trade. It's not paper trading folks. We trade real money. I'm going to trade a $6,000 portfolio. I'll probably trade a 25,000 and then probably a $75,000 portfolio of oil only. So if you have a $100,000 trade portfolio and you want to trade 6,000 of it or you want to trade 25K of it, that would be a good thing. Or maybe you have a fifty or $40,000 portfolio and you want to trade 6,000 of it in oil. Um, and our goal is to make anywhere from 5% to 10% a month in just the oil only trade. We've been bullish here since we had this breakout. We've been leaning long delta in our trades. Um, you need to be able to trade options on the oil futures market in order to be able to participate in this portfolio. Um, and this is kind of where we're sitting here. Where can it go to the upside? Well, surprise, surprise, right up in the low 60s. That's where I see, I see our target going into the spring, early summer months of next year in this area right here. Now, why this zone here? Well, let me put it out on a weekly again and just kind of give you a little bit more of a better macro view. You can see right here on the weekly, right? <clears throat> and this takes us all the way back to 2015, the summer of 2015. Um, the, the movement in oil right in this area here. Now, keep in mind, in the summer of, uh, in March of 2015, oil was actually down at 41.94 a barrel. And it actually moved all the way up 
to $62 a barrel. So $20 a barrel move <clears throat> from Mar the middle of March to the essentially the middle of May. So you're talking eight weeks, $20 barrel move. So don't tell me oil can't do it. And it can do it to the downside as well. So when we look at this and we see, I believe oil is just getting started here. Any pullback is probably going to be bought and we're going to play this and we're going to have fun with it. So that's kind of where I see the oil markets going. Gasoline, we're also trading gasoline as well. If we look at um, uh, gasoline futures, uh, look at this. I mean, it is uh, on, let me put it on the... Um, Oh, that's gold futures. Uh, where? How did I get out of this? <laughs> I knew that didn't look like the right chart. Look at gasoline futures. We're starting to break out of a key level here. Let's put it on a daily so you can see the breakout even better. You can see here we're breaking out here. Now, this move here was Hurricane Harvey. Uh, it was a wonderful crack spread trade where you were long gas and short oil, uh, which is just the opposite of a normal crack spread. Um, and it was a very profitable trade in a very short period of time. Um, but once we got out of that, uh, and now we've been playing this nice up move in gasoline. Now, in this one, we haven't been trading the futures. We've been tra trading the ETF, UGA, Uniform Golf Apple. We've been trading it to the upside. So that's a little bit about how we've been playing in the energy market. Natural gas, we've stayed out of it recently. Um, if we look at the nat gas market, it is basically on this daily chart, very choppy, but essentially we haven't really gone anywhere. I mean, we've stayed uh, right kind of in this wide zone right here. Traditionally, natural gas um, is going to be going, generally is going to start to roll over as we get into November and December. If we have a cold winter, uh, you're going to see it move up towards the upper end of the boundary here. All right, so we haven't traded anything in the nat gas market uh, yet. We're kind of standing down until I get better signals uh, in nat gas. But in the energy market, oh boy, goodness, it's just some great opportunities, and, and we're taking advantage of them. And there'll be some great stock opportunities as well. All right, everybody, that's pretty much the running of the bulls for this past week. Um, I think the bulls are starting to need a little bit of drink of water but I don't see anything that can slow us down too much before the end of the year, short of any geo, political, or fiscal crisis. Other than that, guys, have a great weekend. Members, I will see you Sunday night. Our Option Master Series kicks off next Thursday. You do not, let me underline to that, you do not want to miss it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think everybody will learn a lot out of it. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Members, I'll see you tomorrow night for our weekly market watch. Take care, folks. Ciao.